Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again today. We're doing a bit of fish room maintenance. We're doing a filter clean. We're gonna look what happens to a Fluval FX2 if you don't clean it for six months. Now, I am someone who likes to say I clean my canister filters every three to four months. All my filters I like to do regular maintenance. I am also a lazy, lazy, lazy man and I don't do that. So I have let them go much longer than that before, but this one's been running for about six months without the clean, so we're gonna take a look at it and see how mucky it really gets um, and do a bit of filter maintenance. So this is gonna be the start of a new series of fish room jobs, we'll call them the fish room files, where I'm just going through things that need to be done in the fish room, making little tips. Some of them might apply to non-fish rooms, some of them might only apply to people with fish rooms, but you might pick up some tips and tricks along the way. Today, filter cleaning. Now this is my Flowerhorn Humphreys tank. It's a five foot tank, it's running on a Fluval FX2 with a UVC clarifier on it. And the clarifier actually caused me a bit of a problem. You'll see Humphrey isn't looking too great at the minute. The tank is going through a mini cycle after a crash. Um, what happened, or I think what's happened is the UVC, I attached it directly to the filter, as shown in the instructions, uh, but it collapsed on itself, restricting the flow where it basically no flow was going through the filter. I don't know how long for, but long enough to do some damage to the cycle. So we're doing everything we need to do, lots of daily water changes, lots of treatments to make sure the water's safe and all that, but I thought I'd give the filter a bit of a clean anyway and see the do's and the don'ts of cleaning your filter. So this is the FX2, the smallest of the FX range. Um, perfectly capable filter, still love the filter. The only difference between this and some of the smaller ones is the lack of a purge valve. So some of the bigger ones, your fours and sixes, have a valve there you can collect to do your water changes straight out. That doesn't have that, it's just a plain old canister filter. This, to be fair, has been running fine. The problem has been this bit up here. So this is the UVC clarifier, which I have now mounted. Um, if you buy one of these, it doesn't come with the extra hose you need. It comes with the instructions where you mount it with this valve attached directly to the FX246, whatever one you've got. And what had happened is when I had connected this directly to the filter with this hose, this is kind of soft, malleable rubber, and the weight of this with water full of it, it collapsed on itself and created a pinch point where, yeah, just stopped any flow going through, which was a bit of an issue. All sorted now, cut an extra bit of hose off here, so I attached it and mounted it in under the stand, under the tank on the stand and since then it has been working a one okay. So, filter maintenance. With all the FX rings, they all work the same. They all have these valves on the top, one in, one out. This is in, this is out. All we want to do is close these valves first off. Before turning it off or anything else, close these valves, which is fairly easy to do with a turn. And that means no water is going in or out, and I can now disconnect these. There'll be a little bit of a drip but that's it. One of the features I really like about the FX range because you don't, no danger of you. Yeah, switch it off first. I never claimed to be a smart man. So I was about to say, that's one of the features I like about this is there's a very low risk of flooding the place because of these valves. If you don't want to turn the friggin' thing off first, then that will happen if you take the out valve off before turning off the filter. But anyway, save myself a job because this is now empty and quite light and easy to move around. So we'll take the lid off. That's the next stage in any filter maintenance. have a look at the damage and see how truly disgusting it is. The FX range is just really screw tight and pop off, lift the lid off. And then you have these two little tabs either side and you can lift all your media trays out. And the first thing I'll say is, that looks pretty good. I brought it outside so I'm just not standing in a puddle, but basically this is the FX2. All the FX models have a very similar sort of setup. This one has basket and basket technology, but water comes in, goes down to the bottom, rises up through these outer sponges here. So this is your first mechanical filtration. And to be fair, those coarse sponges, they look fine, but what I would normally do would be rinse all those coarse sponges in some tank water. 
anything you're cleaning here, you want to clean in some tank water or specifically some dechlorinated water. Because if you rinse it in chlorinated water, you risk losing your biological bacteria. So it rises up through the coarse sponge and then back down to the bottom. So it goes down to the bottom, up to the top, down to the bottom and back to your tank. So it goes down the middle, which is another layer of sponge, which is fairly coarse on the top, which again, looks fine. Um, this is the filter and filter technology. So as you can see, it's very little coming off that. I will give them all a rinse though. Coarse mechanical and then fine mechanical. And this is when it looks less than clean. Uh, fish poop. That is grotty as all hell, caked in fish poop. Um, I've seen arguments about whether you have your coarse mechanical, fine mechanical, then chemical, then biological as the order for your filter media. I've kind of always done it like this, or I've tried everything, but it hasn't made all that much difference if I'm perfectly honest, that I've noticed. But I like this, that the mechanical, this crud here, isn't clogging up your biological filtration media, which is the next tray. And in this one, I've just got some stuff that came with the filter. So Fluval sent me all this. And as you can see, that looks pretty clean. Quick rinse and that's it, cleaned. It's not got all that fish poop mucking it all up and clogging all the surface area. And then the last thing is another finer sponge. And then back to the tank. So that to me looks quite good in that nothing really needs cleaning other than my fine mesh, which I clearly need to do more often because that's minging. So I'm going to give this all a quick rinse and put it back together again. Okay, so put it all back together again. We've rinsed all the sponges. There wasn't that much going on there. So really, it's just that one layer of fine mesh, which I've replaced with some pillow stuffing. So go to your local supermarket, buy the cheapest pillows they've got that don't have any treatments at all. Rip it out and you've got loads of this stuff. Cheapest chips. So that goes back in there. So that's my top level. And then my bottom level is again, just the finer, uh, finer sponge, biological media. I can mess around with that if I want and put more biological in because there's quite a lot of sponge here. Um, I might get rid of that bit of sponge and add some more bio media in there, but I think we're all right. Back in the filter, fill it up with some water and away we go. For putting it back in, you basically put this in, slot on the lid, and then on opposite sides, start to tighten it up. Just that way you don't get too much pressure on one side. Sometimes you can pinch the seals, so I'll just watch out for that. As you can see, I'm very leak averse, so I don't want to spill any water. Um, I've never needed any tools or anything to tighten these up. Just get them nice and tight by hand tight. And we're good to go. Just a case of reattaching the valves in and out. Open the in and that will fill the filter. Because it will be siphoning water from the tank. Put it back in position. Make sure both valves are open and turn it back on again. So as you can see, after six months, not too bad. Um, I kind of like the way I've got it set up in the order of media and where I put the fine filter because it really just does need that one layer that gets changed most often. The rest of it, a quick rinse, you're good to go. Like I say, I've tried the other ones and yeah, marginal gains one way or the other, depending on what you're trying to get out of it. If you want to extend the period between changes, things like adding a coarse sponge to your intake filter and um, your intake can make a big difference because that just take that sponge off the intake give that a rinse and then you don't need to go to the whole palaver of opening up your filter but whether it's a canister filter a hang on back a sump the same general principles apply small medium large tanks whatever it might be hope you found that of some use um, like I said, click subscribe if you want to see more stuff. I'll be going around the fish room doing lots of jobs, talking about the little tweaks and 
um, no doubt causing more disasters and floods as we go. So click that subscribe button and you won't miss any of them. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.